All right. Good day. Good evening. And I'm sending as much positive energy out to the world since we are live streaming during the pandemic and this most amazing transition around the world for our personal lives, our professional lives, etc. cetera. Uh, well, so welcome back to another live podcast today. We're going to be uh, talking a lot about, well, I think actually probably everything around a healthy business lifestyle since we talk about health, business, and lifestyle on this podcast. And most excitingly, I'm going to give you a quick background on my new guest co-host today because we're going to talk about video. And for those of you who know me, you know I'm a geek about video. I have no problem going live, sometimes to a fault, according to my wife. And uh, I love promoting it for all businesses and brands everywhere. So that being said, let's learn how to improve your brands, your business, and more live because everybody should be doing it right now instead of sitting on your butts and drinking a beer and doing nothing. So ladies and gentlemen, today's guest co-host uh, might be caring a little bit about passionate storytelling. That's part of video. That's part of uh, getting the right advertising and marketing out there. And by nature, uh, this gentleman serves as BombBombs. There's a great brand name, by the way. BombBombs Chief Marketing Officer. Uh, they are a video production company and so much more. Uh, so anyway, he has actually co-authored a book, uh, The Definitive Guide to Better Business Communication, titled Rehumanize Your, Your Business. We were just chatting before we hit record that its bright orange cover stands out in the airports when we start flying more. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. without further ado, he's not going to have some fun tonight because he's actually local here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Steven Passanelli, welcome to the show, sir. I'm excited to be on, Scott. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for freeing up your uh, fine Monday evening. So yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. apparently uh, business hours don't really apply anymore <laughs> no no i don't I, I don't think they do and especially when your office is already in your garage so you can just you know walk in or walk out i see it. in my garage it's straight up gym so uh i mean i have a very large garage i have friends my like so when are you just gonna move your office out there and i yeah. said you know the wife would probably like that uh or i i could build a second studio out there and then i've got diversification uh for mm -hmm. the video shoots because i have actually done some live podcasts from the garage so so your your garage from that well, office looks nice. <laughs> well, it, not really. It's it looks a lot bigger than it is. It's about six by eight feet in the corner of the garage. I built it with my father-in-law in like two days, nice. just uh, just to be separated from the house. But I want to redo the garage and put the gym in my office upstairs and build a second. So I'm kind of doing. Oh, nice. Okay. My gym's in the basement. It's grimy. I kind of like the grimy gym in the basement. Though. Well, I mean, you know, so. If you ever decide to come to Allentown, uh, I have a 3,000 square foot garage. So yeah. <laughs> I have more square footage in my garage than I have our house. So <laughs> okay. I, I was lucky enough to meet a, a beautiful, intelligent young woman uh, whose family was started in construction on this property in 19, well, early 1900s. So uh, she bought the great grandmother's house and came, what came with it was a big old man's own garage that I spent five years, the past five years, gutting and upgrading and never stopping to upgrades. Actually, it's I'll have more stuff planned for the evenings this week to keep myself busy. So yes, uh, but I have a good sized CrossFit space out there right now. <laughs> said that you, is your house built in 1910? Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, well, you're this area, right? So here is I'm in the I'm north outside of Allentown, an area called uh, South Whitehall Township. But like out, areas outside of Philadelphia, I mean, people under, underestimate the history. Yeah, of, of the northeastern part of the U.S. I mean, we have so much colonial history here, and this is 1900. That's actually new. If we go way back, where my parents live an hour west of here, uh, that town is Newmanstown, Pennsylvania, was founded in the 1700s. So yeah. there's some very old buildings out there. Yeah, I, growing up, I lived in a house that was built in the late 1700s. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, I, when I grew up, uh, well, my parents had a dairy farm in New Jersey, but then when they moved us here to Pennsylvania, I was probably fifth grade, they bought a smaller farm, and that one was probably uh, mid to late 1800s. Like all, all the uh, the wood beams in the barns were held together by wooden pegs, and and we had a classic stone basement with dirt floor. And <laughs> definitely wouldn't want one of my. You're just talking about the gym in your basement. Definitely would not want my gym in a dirt basement. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, it's it's re, it's refinished. It's a it's a farmhouse, but it's it's been re, it's been gutted really, and then built. Nice. Very nice. I, I, I will admit, if I could stumble across something like that in this current market, because I'm predicting right now that we might see some of the experiences from 08, 09 with the real estate market, and we're going to be flipping this house into a rental. So I'm like, well, great. I've already got 
about a third to two thirds of the garage is rented out for antique car storage. I have two guys putting very nice cars that I don't own in there. So I get to sit there and look at them. Uh, and then I got my personal space too. And I was like, great, the next house, I need to have a secondary man zone in case, you know, what if I have a barn or a nice farmhouse? I would love to stumble across great property that way. So, yeah. yeah. But see, that adds some of the character, right? So like you and I are talking about right now, like people are like, oh, I thought they were gonna talk about business and video. And we will, yeah. but we are human beings. And we all have a personal life in and outside of our business life. And I love bringing this topic up. And that's where I want to, that's why I was excited for you today is that people to this day are still hesitant about intertwining that personal brand with their professional brand. What are your thoughts on that? Because I think that ties in with video. <laughs> yeah, no, it does tie in with video because, and obviously it does because you know, speaking to someone face to face, you get a much richer and more whole level of, of communication and people really get to see who you are. The people that don't do well with video are people that put up a front hmm. or people that only read scripts while, while on video. It has to be your authentic self. It has to come through. Your personality comes through, which is a, of course a composite of, of everything around you. Yeah. Uh, and the people that really do well, whether it's marketing through video and it's a polished video piece, or whether you're, you're trying to communicate more effectively using video as opposed to typing out a text-based email. You're gonna send a video message to someone. The more authentic, the more true to yourself that you can be. If you're quirky, be quirky. If you're funny, be funny. If you're analytical, don't try to be funny and be analytical. No. <laughs> you know, whatever you are, that's what you wanna, I'm kinda, I'm kinda spastic. So in video, I'm like all over the place and, I'm moving, and that's who I am and I'm not gonna try to be any different. I'm not gonna you know, try to be something I'm not. And I would agree. I'm actually more animated if I'm doing video out in the garage because I have the, uh, I don't know where they are right now, but I have the Rode makes those nice Bluetooth mics. So completely wireless uh, communication. Oh, yeah. They're only yeah. about four or $500, but I highly recommend them. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted them for so long and I finally bought them right when this COVID thing went down because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to level up that audio so I can be my natural self. Like yeah. <laughs> right here, I, I got the boom mic here. I got the lighting, oh, right, you know, the ring lights. So I'm like, I can't yeah. move around too much. Uh, but even though I'm Irish by bloodline, people, my wife's always said like, you sure you're not Italian? Cause you're very, I was like, yeah, the hands get out there. I get a little crazy, but I was like, but I'm animated. And yeah. some people that's not natural. I agree with you. If you're, if you're naturally not an animated person and you're trying to fake it on the video, this is one of those situations where that classic statement out there, like, uh, fake it till you make it like, no, no, no don't do that. And that's okay. <laughs> it's okay to not be animated. There's, there's best practices that you can follow. There's things that you can do, like just the framing, you know, of, of your video can make a big difference on how the person perceives you. Mm. Um, and even if you're not animated, just as long as someone can see your hands, like it, it is very important. I don't know if you saw the uh, TED Talk statistic that people that use more hand gestures uh, 400 as compared to 200, the amount of video views and the popular popularity. Oh, yeah topic uh rises exponentially it's, it's, it's tied to expression right yeah absolutely yeah you're adding you're not just animating because I, I will say i have seen some speakers where they i think they're trying too hard with the hands yeah, yeah. there you go yeah he, and ladies and gentlemen who are not watching some facebook and, and they'll be watching this in the podcast world uh, weeks to come is that he, he's doing like the you take two hands you put them right up on the side of your head and you draw them aggressively down mm -hmm. towards the, the earth and it's like you're being like ex exclamatory and yeah. it's like, okay, I, I get it. Let's just yes. dial it back a notch. <laughs> yeah, when you do like the, the fine ones too, it's like, and as a team, yes. we are one. You know, it's cheesy. Right. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a fan. I, <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, I get it, but no, please. <laughs> yeah. Now, so was that some of the inspiration though off of the book where, where you guys had already seen those type of statistics come out from, you know, great organizations like TED Talks. Um, and I was like, you know what guys, like, we might know how to talk about some of this. Like, yeah, we know how to personalize some videos. Maybe this, maybe a book is required. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was some of the inspiration. Yeah, you know, I started using video for communication purposes. And again, there's marketing through video and relationships through video. Marketing is when you get the green screen, the drone, the high end lighting and the equipment and you record it. Relationships through video are, are more organic messages where someone's just taking out their phone, they're, they're using their laptop camera or something, and they hit the record button because they know whatever message they, they have to deliver, 
would be much better delivered in person, but time or distance or technology is keeping them apart. It's not yeah. suited for a text-based communication. It either has nuance, um, it, it requires more clarity, uh, relationship needs to be built. And so back in 2011, I didn't even work for Bomb Bomb then. I was looking for a way. I traveled the country at a 48 city speaking tour. Yeah, and, you were doing, you were a uh, one of the speakers for Realtor.com, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we would go into a city and we would speak for the day, and I would get up on stage and we'd had salespeople in the back and we would sell a bunch of products. But as soon as we left that city, we we wouldn't sell anymore. We would sell when we were face to face. Mm -hmm. But it was harder if we didn't close the deal when I was speaking that day it was hard to get that deal closed. And so that's when I began using video. And I used it wrong initially. I started sending marketing messages out. So after the events, the people that were like close to buying but didn't buy, you know, we'd send a marketing video of product X, Y, or Z to them. Like, yeah, saying, it's almost like you're kind of reselling them again instead of just yeah. doing a simple follow-up. Instead of connecting. Right. And once, once we switched, you know, it took, it took me a couple months, I'm a slow learner. Uh, but once we switched and we started sending follow-up videos just like, Hey Scott, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since you came out to the event. I hope you really started, you know, implementing some of the strategies that we talked about. You told me you really like strategy X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, just wanted to check in on you, see how you're doing. And when we just started acting like a human being and not mm -hmm. like someone that had commission breath and just selling product pitches and product pitches out. Commission breath. I like that one. <laughs> that's that's when that's when we really we started closing lots of deals after we left the city because they got to see us face to face. They got to hear our voices. They were reminded of who we were that day. And we built a lot of trust and rapport, providing great training and education face to face. But people forget that trust and rapport. It wanes, right? right. And text. When they when there's an awesome article called The Epidemic of Facelessness, um, and it's in the New York Times, and they talk about how people, if they don't see you, they they don't act as if you are human. They don't recognize the humanity in the other person. And they, they gave examples of like uh, articles where people can't see each other and they say mean things or road rage where you only see the other car. But that applies to that follow up. And when they couldn't see us and we're just sending text based messages to these people, we weren't getting the same connection as when we were sending real heart to heart videos. You know, it's, it's interesting because I'm doing this for one my largest client right now. If I, she's probably a good chunk of my business, actually, because we've been working together for years. And she she runs a a sales rep firm for the HVAC industry. So she has the contracts with, you know, I think currently about eight to nine different manufacturers of products in that industry. One of which right now is the UV technology for your indoor air quality mm -hmm. and water quality, everything. But obviously with everything going down with the pandemic, yeah. that's a big deal. So I've been running webinars and trainings for them uh, for weeks now because this is, that's my jam. And I know the products because uh, we have a sales and marketing contract and I, I do some you know CEIO level face-to-faces uh, with a lot of decision makers on behalf of her company for those manufacturers as well. And the biggest thing that she's never done, especially during this transition is, well, now all of a sudden you don't have the face-to-face. -face. You've lost some of that, right? Some of these companies have had to close their doors or they are, they are essential businesses, but they're not letting salespeople come in. They're not having the face-to-face -face meetings. Even, and actually, a lot of them aren't even doing a lot of aggressive buying right now. They're being very methodical and, and trying to plan their way through this storm as well. And I said, well, that's no reason not to still get some type of face-to-face -face communication out there. So one of which was, she's very advanced. I noticed on your site, uh, you guys do, and actually, I'm going to do some screen sharing for the book as well for the video watchers, but uh, you guys have it on here for bombbomb.com forward slash book, and you can see the book for Rehumanize Your Business. But I noticed on your site, you guys align with uh, high-end software and, uh, well, mm -hmm. basically SaaS solutions, and uh, for example, Salesforce. She's a huge, she, that is the foundation of her company. Uh, she spends a lot of money on Salesforce. <laughs> and uh, we've always been, I mean, probably past year and a half, two years, we've talked about possibly adding in some video integration. She had looked at a couple of other providers probably about a year and a half ago. And I said, well, in the meantime, you have a YouTube channel that you've never grown, right? So for the bigger, like, so now every single training we do, I told her to get together a, a legal notice so that anybody who change any of the trainings that we help host, those will become public content for the YouTube. That, that's, I, that's actually free marketing content for the people who do attend the training because they can say, hey, look, we're out there getting trained on indoor air quality, blah, blah, blah. But I said, one thing we're missing is how are you communicating back to 
all of your sales managers and sales directors of these manufacturers, they're employing sales rep firms like you and they know that the sales reps aren't in the field right now. So they're probably wondering, okay, well, where's all that money going? <laughs> so we launched something new last week for her call. We calling it the state of the union and it's literally a three minute video. It's, they're going to pull off all the dashboards and graphs. They specifically designed for the manufacturers and it shows a snap, a weekly snapshot, how many calls are being done, emails, uh, where the order targets are, where the commissions are at. And it's just saying, Hey, here's a real time feel what's happening. Because normally they look at numbers, you know, 60 days, 90 days ago, and, and now it's manifesting forward. And I said, a two to three minute video. And then they were worried about, well, her, her assistant, who's actually made it her task, she's at her home office. And she's like, oh, should we order a green screen and stuff like that? And I'm like, no, it's, it's a two to three minute video. Everybody knows that everybody's working from home. Yeah. Keep, it, keep it real. You know, let them see Tara in, in her dining room on her computer, giving the state of the union of where the company's at right now. It's okay. And so we just launched something like that. What are your thoughts on something like that? Absolutely. The, there's a shiny authenticity inversion. The shinier that something is, a lot of times the less authentic it feels. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your video, there's a time and place for shiny for sure. Oh, yeah. But there's also a time and place, especially if you're trying to deliver a heartfelt message, the, the less production that you put towards it, the more it sounds like it comes from the heart and less, less from, from the mind. And that's right. And I, and I realize I never fully answered you know, your question, which ties into what you just asked right there too. That's why we wanted to write the book to explain the, the difference of the styles of videos out there. Mm. And like the one-to-one, -one, the heartfelt messages, or even if it's one to many, like you just described, you know, if it's a, a three minute video, it's, it's delivering a video that, that delivers a personal experience and can help you accelerate the sales process, can help you improve the customer experience because you're making connections through video. You're not just selling through video. Yeah. And that's a good point, right? Because, okay, now we are actually putting the state of the union up on the YouTube because even though it's only three minutes, I said, you know what, you always, you'll have something public to show maybe your next manufacturer. If you ever sign another contract saying, well, listen, this is some of the creativity we put out there. But to your point, if it's a simple like quick follow-up or something like that, do you really need to go through the trouble of publishing on a YouTube channel, make sure you have a public link and blah, blah, blah. You're just looking at embedding a quick, Hey, how you been? You know, I, we still like you, you know, it does, it, that's not right. marketing content. That's a follow-up. It's know? a follow-up. It's right. a, it's a communication channel. It's just like the phone or email or video. And if you think about it just as a communication channel and not as a go to market plan, or not a marketing plan. It's just another channel for you to communicate in. Hmm. So now, are you guys similar to the other companies that we looked at probably a year or two ago where, hey, you guys are showing people how to integrate your systems in with their existing systems. If, you know, if they don't use Salesforce, I don't know, you guys have Zendesk too? Yeah, Zendesk. Yeah, there you go, Zendesk, all that Outreach. stuff, right? So it's like, yep. guys, you just want to record a quick video, don't make it complicated, embed it in the email, boom. You know, yeah. so obviously they'll be integrating your software, your technology, for example. Are you guys more, are you guys more of a pass or a SaaS platform as a service or a software as a service? Software. Okay. So I always like to clarify that too. People don't know what pass is. I used, I got, a, I got a tech background. <laughs> so, uh, but that's, that, that's fun because people never thought about these things. They were like, oh, well the boring emails get lost to get pushed to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And it's not to your point, it's not personalized, especially right now. Uh, we just had a big team call from a one client a few hours ago. And there we stay. We always like to share, like, what is your lesson learned, you know, from last week? And one of the executives, she's like, well, she's like, I was, I didn't think it was this casual or would take, be taken the wrong way. But she's like, I just, I just said, Hey, so when do you think you guys will be opening back up? And she thought it was gonna be like, you know, more like looking forward to getting back to yeah. business, business again. And the guy responded saying, well, uh, I just lost my father last week. So I don't care when we fully open up. And we were like, wow. So she's like, you know, this is a great time to remind ourselves that when you're calling and checking on people, like don't put the business second, put the personalization first. And I figured this would be a powerful thing to talk about because this is like totally aligned with your book right now. It's like a lot of us, obviously sales and marketing professionals, businesses in general, we want, we want small businesses to be succeeding. We want to see people get through this. We know the economy has got a lot of healing that's gonna, that has to come ahead. Um, but we also got to remind ourselves we are human beings talking to other human beings and it can't hurt to say, Hey, by the way, how you been, man? You and the family good? Is everybody all right? You know, 
then get to the business stuff later. <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah. and that's, I think it goes back to the first question, you know, that, that you asked about personal and business. You know, do you mix the two? And absolutely you mix the two because people run businesses. It's people that you're trying to, you're not trying to connect with the business. You're trying to connect with an individual. Yeah. No matter if you're selling them, if it's a partner of yours, no matter what you're connecting to people. And so it should always start with people first. And it's one easy way to do it is, is through video. So I guess another uh, piggyback question for that. <laughs> Obviously it created a book. So you guys definitely became passionate about this, but have you seen a lot of those mistakes even before this, this pandemic transition? But I mean, obviously yeah. this is not the first time people have made that great lesson pop up on our radars. Like a lot mm -hmm. of us forget that, Hey, we're talking, we're calling people, we're emailing people, people to people to people. You're not communicating robot to robot. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? Why do you think it gets so easy to lose the human connection? Can we, can because, we, can we hold technology accountable here? I don't know. I mean, cause right? I, th I, th I think, you know, 25 years ago, one of the biggest shifts that we've had in the business world is all of our communication was relegated to black text on a white screen. There you go. And when you remove the messenger from, from the message, you remove the humanity, you remove the emotion, you remove the tone, you re remove the, the, the personal nature of the message. Now we can have personalized and that's all the, the crap that we get in our email inbox every day that has your name on it. That's personalized, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between personalized and personal. Personal mm -hmm. is a message written specifically for you. Personalized is some token or, or autofill, you know, that, that fills in your information. That's, that's not, that's not for you specifically. And so I think that's part of the problem because, you know, we're relying on text-based text messages, text-based email, text-based Slack messages. These are all times and places. I won't use Slack. I'm sorry. I know that's <laughs> I know I freaks some people out listening to this right now. I get it. I'm all about supporting t technology integration, but I've been on a few projects and I just didn't like it. And some people like it. Like we're, yeah. we're currently looking at launching a conference for one of my other clients and they want to use Crowdcast and integrate it with Slack to create, because they want to do a live conference with live speakers right now okay. because they, cause everybody's stuck remote. Right. So, and I was like, okay, let's just make sure we're really on top of that Slack thing. Cause I could see a lot of stuff just falling apart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, we are Slack users. It's a, it's a, it's a love hate, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind, kind of relationship there. So, you know, no matter what you're using, you shouldn't be communicating, especially when we're split apart, especially from our colleagues, you shouldn't be communicating with text only. And there's a gap. There's a massive gap because everyone knows of zoom or using zoom right now. Mm -hmm. So why well, I use video because I use zoom. Well, what happens the other 99% of the time that you're not in a synchronous face-to-face -face meeting where that person had the time at the same exact time that you have the time and you scheduled out the appointment and you both agreed that you were ready to meet? What if you don't have that relationship built with that person yet? What Good if point. you're trying to prospect? What if you already have the relationship and you want to convey a complex topic, but it's hard to get them on the phone to schedule that time out? It's hard to get them to respond to your email. These are all the opportunities where text-based communication isn't going to do it for you, but a synchronous meeting and trying to get that done isn't going to do it for you either. What's in between? And in between is either a phone call or it's a video message where they can, you can record it on your own time and they can consume it on their own time. And it's a richer form of communication. You record your screen if you want to walk someone through a demo. Oh walk yeah, I love that. I love doing yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's just, it's just a much better way to communicate. They can see, they can hear you. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a richer way to connect. I, I loved that. I forget how many updates it was ago when they finally started giving you the ability to actually screen record on a smartphone on yeah. the iPhones, right? Like that was huge. I can't tell you how many times I've had to try and walk people through using a new app that we're using on a project. Right. And, right. and I was like, man, I just wish when they finally launched that, I was like, they, they heard me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because like you're saying, doing a quick 30 second recording of a screen walkthrough. So you actually have the visual to back up the auditory. It, it, it's huge. Like I, I, I talk about here for podcasting. Like right now you and I are recording. Podcast world is still, I'd say 85, 90% audio. Mm -hmm. I've, this is now episode 50. So what was that three, over three years ago? Episode 50 is when I started doing video <laughs> because I said, 
I'm done with Skype. I hated it. I, I got in on Zoom. Yeah. I was like, wait, am I already using Zoom for business? Like, why don't I just do it for the podcast? And I said, you know what? Yeah, is video slow in the podcasting world to take root? Fine. But I'm generating new videos to my YouTube channel every single week, every single month. I'm generating video content when possible, like tonight, live streaming to Facebook. You're not going to hang out for an hour or less anyway. So mm -hmm. why not double dip, right? Yep. Why would it, why would it hurt? And there's still a lot of people because podcasting is still very that as we're talking about, it's very removed. Like I can hide behind my microphone. I don't even have to turn my webcam on. You and I could not be seeing each other at all right now. We could be sitting here in pajamas doing a podcast and people do it because they're afraid to turn on that webcam. And, that's, and I've, I've said this for, I've said this on stage at podcasting conference. I'm like, guys, get outside your comfort zone. That's where the growth is. Get the face to face. And people are afraid of this. What do you guys talk to people about that? Well, I think people can can hear the connection, even if they're just listening to the podcast, there's a difference. You know, I've been on a lot of podcasts as well. Obviously, you create a mountain of podcasts. There's such a difference when the two people communicating with one another can look at each other in theory in the eye. Um, Vanessa Van Edwards uh, has some interesting statistics about, about video and oxytocin and they studied if oxytocin is released when you meet face to face with someone uh, through conversation can that actually happen through a video message or a synchronous an asynchronous video message or a synchronous video call um, and that also can happen so that that oxytocin release of like wow this person's cool they make me feel good that gut feeling that you get whether you like someone or not that can happen you know through through video well, I love the fact you're tying this to oxytocin uh, because, well, actually, when I did my marketing degree, which I still laugh about to this day, I'm like, I, just because I have a BS in marketing doesn't mean it has anything that I'm doing today in my business. Uh, it just proved that I could go do a piece of paper. Uh, but the one thing I loved about it was I ended up falling in love with psychology courses. Yeah. And learning about the mind, learning about the chemicals, the endorphins, the hormonal impacts, all that stuff. So to this day, that is the biggest takeaway. I've always given uh, respect back to a uh, traditional university collegiate education mm -hmm. uh, that has aligned very well with the entrepreneurial spirit is that, you know, taking courses on world cultures and, and understanding different cultures helped me grow as a person because I, I was born on a farm, you know, like, so I was farm kid turned corporate turned firefighter turned entrepreneur podcaster, right? So it's, I got a crazy life cycle. So I always try to give respect back to that component where studying philosophy, world cultures and psychology, those components were the biggest takeaways I took out of that collegiate education. And the psychology component is so huge in marketing. So huge. I mean, nowadays you could dual major in both, which is great. Back in the day, you couldn't. Um, I think it's huge to understand these different trigger points. And that's, and again, going, going back, that the average person makes 35,000 decisions every single day, 35,000. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you can argue that exact number, and if you think that that's not possible for you, just think about, you just nodded your head, you just blinked, you just nodded again. All of that's a decision. Now, you're not actively making that decision. Yeah. You, your, your body, you're just, you just know what to do. Your body makes that decision through routine and through heuristics and getting into psychology. And this is why video is so powerful because people make thousands of decisions based off of their previous experiences that they program their mind and their brain to remember that when this happens, I feel this way. And when you're reading the text on someone's screen, if, you're, if you send a message to a colleague and it could be interpreted two ways, they don't have an opportunity for those heuristics to run for them to make that decision. It's only when you deliver it, they can see you, they can hear you, that all those thir the 35,000 decisions that you make every day, they can fully run and they can use the full scope of their brain to interpret your message. And going back to, to video, whether it's synchronous like this and we're talking back and forth, I know when to shut up because I can tell when you're about to, to talk yep. and vice versa. And I know when to pause and you know when to pause. If we didn't have this visual feedback, it would be harder and we would talk over each other a lot more. And it still does happen. I think it's, yeah. uh, that's actually good to, to be honest about that too. And I love where you hit on this because this is great, like podcast 101, uh, is that unfortunately, there's still going to be technology challenges, right? We're going to have internet lag uh, I've actually literally, again, tonight I was wondering, I'm like, you know, I've been wanting to change around my schedule, the scheduler on the website, especially during this transition, more people are home, more people are using zoom, more people are doing 
TV, movie, video games. So people's networks in their neighborhoods that were designed for residential cons consumption bandwidth yeah. are now being used for business level bandwidth. Right. And I, I'm going to geek a little bit here. Not everybody understands all that, but like guys, like luckily I pay for a, uh, a 250 megabits per second download and a uh, 15 megabits per second upload account. So it's not that expensive, but luckily I'm in a decent neighborhood with good bandwidth. So I have good internet, but that still gets challenged. If I happen to be wanting to podcast on a Friday night at 6 PM, man, I've in the past couple of weeks, I had to cancel that, those slots. I, I won't book that because they're being hammered right now. But back to your point, if I didn't have the visual at least, and even if there was a slight lag, I could still, catch it within a few seconds. And every once in a while, we may over talk each other for a few seconds. If there's a lag, that's going to happen. Can you imagine if you didn't have the video too, and you were just doing audio, you're just talking over each other left and right. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a visual cues. Um, and, and our, as human beings, we are meant to read visual cues. You know, we, we have been talking for hundreds of thousands of years. We've only been, there's only been mass literacy for the past 500 years, mass literacy. Okay. And so we're, we're not great. You know, we're not, it's not ingrained in us over hundreds of thousands of years of, of speaking face to face and reading, reading people's expressions. And if you weren't good at it, if you weren't good at reading someone's facial expressions, reading body language a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years ago, you didn't survive to pass on your genes to the next generation. Good point. So it's an eight. It's mm -hmm. in you. Everybody's good at it because, you know, if someone walked up with their hands behind their back 2000 years ago and was like, hey, you know, like, oh, what do you got behind yeah. your back? You're going to back up. Yeah. But, but the person that didn't know to back up. And their genes oh, that's true. Back. To this day, there's been a lot more. I mean, look at the well, before the pandemic. Look at all the people that were walking around New York City. Great example. Staring at their phone, walking right into the street of traffic. I'm like, what are you doing? And it happens around here too. And I was like, well, hello. Like, be aware of your social surroundings. Okay. Use your, all of your senses. <laughs> you know, put the phone in your pocket. Like, especially if you're in New York City, man. Like, I'm saying, dude, the taxis don't care. <laughs> no, no. They'll, they'll, they'll take that dent to the fender off of your hip. I'm just saying. Uh, it, I've seen it happen. So, but that's a good point, right? Is that I think thanks to the advancements of society and technology and where we, how far we've come, that's been part of a, a concern as well is a lot of people have forgotten about, I, I, I've been, I mean, I studied martial arts as a kid. So I learned about my, my inner three foot to four, or three to five feet of, of my space when people approach me. So like I have a couple of friends that are very huggy and I still don't do well with that. I'm like, you're in my bubble, bro. <laughs> like back out. Okay. <laughs> and granted we're friends. So it's not like I got to worry about it, but I can't help it. It's just the way I was raised or how I was trained. And I always, I've always been aware of my, especially that inner circle, man, that three foot yeah. bubble around me. You're in my personal space. All right, let's just back it up. Okay. <laughs> David Meerman Scott, um, in his book, Fanocracy, you know, talked about the, the space and the distance and it's zero to four feet is your personal space. Hope I get this right. And four to 12 feet is social space. That's when you acknowledge, you know, other people and then above 12 feet. And he talks about it in, in the use of video too. And like how far we are standing back from the camera and we do interpret it the same way. Like if I was all up in your grill. I know that'd be weird. This would be awkward right now. Did you like, you're up in my grill, even though you're in another. <laughs> it's weird, right? <laughs> you're, out, you're over an hour away. And I'm like, dude, why are you all up on your webcam like that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and if you feel uncomfortable, but at a normal, at a normal, like four feet, like yeah. we're, we're in that just almost personal space, but not quite personal space. Like this is the comfort zone right here. It's yeah. the same thing. That's why like, if you see the zoom calls and like people are like typing on their computer and their yeah. faces, it's like, man, please. Well, that's why we don't, we don't want, we don't have cable. So uh, my, my wife's a veterinary doctor, chiropractic doctor for animals. She's busy. I'm busy. But when we do sit down just to spend some time together, like we love Saturday night live. So when COVID started going down, cool. SNL has been having so much fun with their skits, man. Yeah. But yeah, they're like doing stuff where they're all up in the webcam and they're just like, free, like purse, like, how do you use this? And they're having fun with it because it, it is true. There's employees out there that have never been trained to be on a webcam. They yeah. never knew what a Zoom call is. I think the one skit, they were kind of basically making it seem like it's that secretary who's worked for the company for like 40 years. Yeah. And now she's stuck at home and she's worried that she's doing a good job and she's putting her face right in the camera and, and yelling into the microphone. And unfortunately, That's it's actually true. 
<laughs> yeah, it's personal space. It still, it still makes yeah. a difference, even yeah. on video. It's, you're in your, it's you're, now you're in my virtual uh, inner bubble. So, it, but see now, so let's tie this back in. These these three to four minute videos, or sometimes two minute videos, don't need to go out on Vimeo, YouTube. Oh. You don't need to put them on your Facebook. It's just simple. It's a different way of touching somebody. And I, I've told people for the longest time, you can all the different sales influencers out there. And I always tell people, whether you like it or not, every single person is a salesperson. People don't understand. They're like, oh, I can never be a sales professional. And I used to struggle with this. And I said, wait a minute. A great mentor is like, Scott, have you ever lied to your parents? I'm like, yeah, like that one time I sideswiped the car on the garage at the farm. Yep. Uh, for years, my family thought that happened by a grocery cart at a drugstore park a lot. And my mom just never knew it until she came home. I, I pulled that one off for a while. <laughs> so they're like, okay, you might be a good sales professional. <laughs> he's like, have you ever had to, you know, sit down and have a job interview? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, you're selling somebody on your skills, right? Yep. Uh, dating. Hello. Yep. Sales. So you just, some people are just further down the timeline than others on the skill set. So, but the one thing that I've always tried to train companies on is like, guys, I guarantee you every single sales professional on your force has slacked off on follow-ups. Not every, not every deal is going to take three to four follow-ups. Some take 10, 12. Some, depending on if it's a capital level product to an accessory product, for example, or services, might take two years to close a deal, right? It just depends on the business, the entity, et cetera. So the more variety that you can incorporate into your follow-up process, the more personalization you can do. Back to your point earlier in the show, the less, uh, what do you call it? Commission-y or commission-y essence? Commission or Commission breath. Yes. The less you come across as somebody just chasing the dollar, yeah. right? I'm calling this to check in. How you been? Right. Or, Hey, I don't know if you knew about this. I know you guys aren't ready right now, but FYI, this is going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Just give it a quick update. Not a big deal. That, and that's and easy that's on a it. video. It's so, and it's so simple right now to people will remember what you did in times like this. And if you're tone deaf with your messaging and you have your automation still going on from outreach Ooh. or, or whatever, yeah. And, and you're sending out messages that don't speak to the times like it, people will remember that, but people will also remember the exact opposite. The 20 seconds that you took to hit record. And if you are using something like bomb bomb or another, you know, software that makes it fast, so you can just do it right in the system, you hit record and you say, Hey, just wanted to reach out and see how you were doing. I hope you and your family are safe and healthy and send that message. You'll be floored how many people respond back. And if they're interested, they start the business conversation automatically without any work on, you know, on, on your part. Yeah, I like this because I was poking around your site and admittedly until, you know, I got connected for podcasting. I thought I've heard this company, your company brand before, because obviously you guys are based in Colorado. Shout out mm -hmm. to my second love. Uh, and, uh, I see. I'm out. I used to live there. I, we go back skiing there every year. Uh, but again, love the branding. Like, it's like, man, if you could drop a bomb of a video, you can close one hell of a deal. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I, I love the fact you guys got, dude, Gmail integration, Outlook generation. We already talked about Salesforce, Zendesk. Uh, I'm not, I'm not heavily experienced in in uh, outreach, but I think that's a big part of this too. Is that this doesn't have to be rocket science. No. You know, for example, like my client I was talking about, she's heavily integrated into Salesforce. Uh, she's, uh, she has uh, Ring Central is her phone application. That's actually pretty smart. I never realized that Ring Central, their video system is actually Zoom. So Ring Central's video system is actually Zoom on the back end, just rebranded as their stuff. Because I went on another guy's podcast the other day and he sent me a Ring Central link and then it, it loaded up just like this. I'm like, wait a minute, that's Zoom. I didn't know. So now my client's like, wait a minute. And she just realized, wait, I don't have my Ring Central fully integrated into Salesforce. So she has to have people manually, well, basically her team, including me, we have to manually uh, update certain things in her Salesforce tracking system. And I said, you know, you do realize that every single phone call that people could be making should be done from Ring Central and it should just automatically synchronize to Salesforce. She just never paid for that upgrade. And these are all things that can make your business easier, more simplified. So, so like, for example, I, I got, I have to get into some of the tech. So bomb bomb, you guys are doing like, let me guess like Chrome browser integration, right? Uh, then, then once all the integrations established, you can establish that with your Salesforce if you are using it. But let's say for me, my company, I don't, I don't need Salesforce, nope. not a big deal. 
I, I, all of my brands that I've ever launched, including my, my, I take care of my, my wife's veterinary business too. Her custom domain emails are actually Gmail. I'm a big fan of using G Suite on the back end. It's so easy for calendar integration, YouTube, et cetera. Big tip for anybody watching or listening out there is just, just pay for that custom domain feature. Stop using my business at gmail.com. Okay. Just yeah. spend the five bucks. All right. Just get the custom domain. <laughs> You're already paying for the dot com. Your email should match it. Uh, sorry, I had to get on a soapbox there for a second. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> so, so give us a walkthrough on that real quick. I know you guys have the ability to you know click on try it free, do the whole tr trial thing, but how easy is this? Yeah. So actually, and for the for the people that are, uh, oh, I can't share my screen. I was going to share my screen. You can share your screen. Yeah. Hold on. So that's a new Zoom. Hold on. I have to unlock that because Zoom yeah. increased their security protocols in the past two weeks. And I used to have that automatically set and I have to go back and override that. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. Do some screen sharing. So, man. so yeah, and, and I'll obviously talk everyone through it for the people that are listening here. This is my real email. I have no idea what emails are up on the screen. So, so, <laughs> so See, so, truth so, and transparency. I love it. Yeah. Whoops. And I meant to unclick that. There we go. So here, I mean. Oh, your buttons are right there. It's right there. So you just hit send video. It opens up your, your email. This appeared on the other screen, so I just drug it over there. So I'm just gonna hit the record button. Hey Scott, it was so awesome being on your show here today. Thank you so much for the invitation. I hope your audience learned a lot and hopefully we can connect since we live in the same state. So I re just recorded my thank you video for you, Scott. Mar Dude. Marty, I'm already done. That's and awesome. I can add a CTA if I wanted you to click on something and it will- Real quick, hold on. CTA, please translate for the newbies. Uh, a call to action. So Thank if you. I was, if I said, Scott, you need to buy my book, I could have added a quick uh, pop-up that would appear in the video when, when you play it and it would say, you know, buy, buy my book right now. Yeah. You, know, you could click on it and it would go there. And then you see in seconds, it just drops that video right inside the email. Now it comes across with that animated preview and that's great because this is the one I sent this morning. I loved your episode on the Brain Fluence podcast, Mike. I sent. I know the Brain Fluence podcast. Nice. Yeah, with Roger Dooley. And so um, we, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but I do something called the Gratitude Project. Yeah, I, don't care. I, I love, I'm a, oh, I love gratitude. So go ahead. Yes. Okay. So whoever I listen to, and I'll, I'll turn this off because that's, that's how easy that is to do. But yeah. Whoever I listened to on a podcast at the beginning of this year, I said, you know what? I listen to so many podcasts. We're, we live in an unprecedented time where I get to hear the smartest people on the planet that I would not have access to just 10 years ago. Hmm. Tell me everything that they do to be awesome. And I'm like, I need to be more grateful for this. And so at the beginning of this year, I decided that I was going to keep track. I actually just printed it out. It's a couple pages here. I'm just going to keep track of. You definitely have analytical traits like me, my friend. <laughs> you got a tracker spreadsheet. I love it. <laughs> so, so I have it. And actually, you know what? Here, I might as well just show you the live version because I have it on my screen. And by the way, let's pause on this. People underestimate the psychological power of, <laughs> of, of being grateful for things. It's so easy right now. There's so much negative influence. We have to find new ways to get more positive. So I love what you're sharing because. This isn't just business, right? This is our personal mindset. And mindset's a big part of this show as well. So yeah. I love what you're going with here. Yeah, so, so I'm sending this out. These are the podcasts that I listened to. Um, and then as I went through, I sent an email to the CMO, the CEO, the VP, the, whoever. And nice. I just simply told them what I learned from their podcast, one, two, or three tips. I try to keep it quick and then how I'm gonna act upon the information that they gave. And I don't know if you saw on that screen, but I tracked the responses. Hmm. And using video, so I send each one with the video, and it's not a, I don't talk about BombBomb, I don't mention BombBomb, it's not a yeah. product pitch at all, I just reach out and thank them genuinely. I have a 76% reply rate because I use, now this one I said I loved your episode on the Brain Fluids podcast, but a lot of them, I'll use their own words on a whiteboard. I'll hold that up in the beginning of the video. And you saw nice. how the video did the animated preview. When they read their own words on my whiteboard, they know, one, I just broke through the noise of the email inbox or, or LinkedIn because I send them through LinkedIn too. Um, and then two, people can't resist their own quotes. Nope. And so they click play 
And I say, you're awesome. Here's what I learned from you. Here's why you're awesome. And the relationships that I built this year with the people that I admire and, and they're emailing back and we're going back and forth and I'm not forcing the relationship. I'm not like, extending i'm not overstaying my welcome like they're asking me questions i'm asking them questions it's been it's the most amazing one of the most amazing things i've ever done and it's so simple and so fun and it makes you feel great and it makes them feel great and they don't get enough people doing that i like to touch so just to geek on the tech a little quick though so i noticed that when it automatically embeds in so it's literally set up to autoplay the way you're in a, your way you're embedding is on the email, right? So if that hits my inbox, if I click on that, a lot of your emails are already set up to preview an image or a file if you allow that security. So as soon as they open an email, if they don't have the security too tight, your quick one minute video will just start playing, right? Well, it's, it, it is a snippet of the beginning of the video. Okay. So if we put the whole video in there, it'd be a larger file. And, and then you're going to run into issues with people's right. email servers. Yeah. So, I, so that's why I'm geeking out. <laughs> it does make it seem like it's that animation. It's that, it's that motion that gets them to click on and allows you. So I convey your backgrounds. We talk about mm -hmm. this in the book. Yep. But if you're sending messages like this, not only is the whiteboard important, but even if the person doesn't click play, they know a little bit about me and I'm making that personal to going back to the first question that you asked. I'm making that personal connection. They know a little bit more about my personal life. Cause I've yeah, you're, you're a geek about old school cameras. I saw that shelf off to the side wall there. I yeah. saw right away, uh, the be brave on the wall, the explore, be kind. Uh, I noticed that stuff immediately. So, yeah. And so when someone looks at it and it's things that I believe in, of course, but they, they see the video, they didn't click play yet, but they see be brave and be kind. I like personally, I think it's like a subliminal message and yeah. I get more video plays because I have those messages back there. So that's interesting. So can people also take this, let's say I did my quick, you know, one minute hello, just to check in. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I'm totally gonna be playing with your stuff after this. And then, uh, and then can you then also embed a secondary link to take them to a longer video, let's say you already have on your YouTube, for example, oh, or yeah. you're, you're, so you already put on Facebook, for example? Yeah, I can, I can actually add multiple videos into the email itself. Yeah. I can have the pre-recorded videos. And so like I was showing you before here, if I pop in um, and I go into, oops. Share. You're like me, by the way. I, I always have to tell people I have three monitors in front of my face. So if you see my head moving around, it's because I got literally three screens looking at. <laughs> exactly. So, so if I'm typing in, you know, I type in my message here and then I'm like, click on that video below. Right. I could just go right here. It's my little power wheel. And then I can search for my pre-recorded marketing videos. If I did want to add a marketing video. Or and this is all stuff they have saved in their account with you guys. Yep. So yep. then I could just hit insert, have multiple videos here, add links in, or if I wanted to send them to a YouTube video, that CTA that I was showing you, the call. Yeah. Um, so that would pop up. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, or um, you can have entire emails pre-written here. So if I go into my library. Nice. You have templates. Yeah. So you could just hit this and it types up the email, adds the video, adds the animated GIFs, like whatever. See, and I'll be guilty. I love all about honesty and transparency, right? This is part of the show and what we're talking about. And so uh, down by you, uh, I'm a big fan of Aweber. They're my email marketing platform. Yeah. And uh, friends of mine used to work there. They even tried hiring me a couple of years ago before they had a sales team. They wanted me to launch a sales team. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. But anyway, love the company, love their tech. Now, I don't know if you actually have an integration with them because that's, that's a little harder to pull off, I guess. I have Aweber integrated into all of my booking software and my, and my calendar system. So everything talks to each other. I got Gmail synced with the calendar, synced with my website, synced with Aweber, synced with uh, Acuity Scheduling is my scheduling software. Mm -hmm. like, and by the way, founder of Acuity Scheduling also now lives here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you don't know if you're their software or not. but No, I'm not. Yeah, oh, they're, I'm a big fan. Way better than Calendly. You ever heard of Calendly? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, At my the back end of my scheduling on my site is actually the Acuity system. So all that stuff integrates beautifully. But I will say, I'm guilty of this. I promote and help my clients do a better job managing their email list. Because I said, the one thing you have full control over is how and when to personalize and really massage your email list because social media has become a lot of pay to play. So take care of your email list, grow your email list. But even I, like I have an email, my email list in probably over a month because I don't 
overly stay on top of that. I don't, I might, I might hit them once a month or once every two months. And I've always been like, you know what? I want an easier way to let them know, hey, here's the latest podcast this month. I could be doing a quick 30 second, hey, shout out. These are your new podcasts that went up this past month. Make sure you go check them out. So, so here's how you would do that. And, and I'll just pop on to a different page here, something that's relatively safe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, that's probably not a good one. My calendar. I'll pop on my calendar. So let's say. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so so I'm here in my calendar. You could pop, you could use Bomb Bomb right through the extension to pop it into your Aweber. So I would just go up here. I would hit screen recorder or camera, nice. or go into my video library, and whatever I clicked, you have the copy HTML. So now oh, I can go. just click that and paste it right into Aweber, and it's one extra step, which would take you a half a second to do. Okay. That's, I like that. Now you guys have an app too? Oh yeah, yeah, we just released our brand, brand new mobile app last week. And Sweet. so the tracking and analytics, so I know if you played 98% of the video or 52% of the video, See, I like I data. when yeah. you played it, and all of that is available um, right, on the, right on the app, the recording, your video library, so yeah. there's all the tracking and analytics with who's playing, who's- See, That's what I do for my clients. I, I, my big thing is strategy and execution. And I just signed another client recently. We're, we're overhauling his entire YouTube channel. He's never looked at his insights. He's got thousands of followers. He's got one video. He's got a half a million views. Never looked at his insights. It's like, okay. I was like, I can help you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so data is king. That's exciting. Um, yeah. Well, well, actually, and real quick, I don't hate to bring us too short, but I was like, we are coming to the end of the our time slot. You got another minute or two? Sure. Okay. Cool. Want to respect your time as well. Thank so. You. Obviously, I, I had to geek out a little bit because this is how I roll. I, I, talk, I warn people all the time, like, uh-oh, new tech, what? Oh, that's cool. Let's play around. Because I want people to watch this and hear this and understand that even, you know, I like to say that I'm pretty savvy. I have my clients say that I'm pretty savvy. But there's always room to grow and learn things, right? To grow and learn new things, uh, to get outside your comfort zone. This is a big part of my brand, right? We fuel your health, business, and lifestyle. I, I, was, I left the corporate world and became a firefighter for a couple of years for that exact reason, to put myself in one of the most uncomfortable places I've ever been. And that triggers massive growth. So like right now, when I'm done with this tonight, I have to go through my uh, draft. I just got back from my book editor because I'll be releasing my first book. And it's part of that transformation like story. So again, comfort zone, right? Like this technology does not have to be complicated. And that's why I wanted to get this video up right away on, on Facebook today, streaming it because I was like, you know what, if one small business saw this and saw, even if they didn't buy your stuff right away, but we convinced them to start doing video more. Hello. <laughs> I mean, is it, is it wrong to go that all encompassing? What are your thoughts on that? No, it's not. Um, it, I go to a lot of trade shows and people will still walk up and you know, there'll be a little group of people and they'll be like, Oh, do you, do you do video? Mary does video. Do, do you do video? And people talk about it in a way like it's again, like it's and like a, right in front of your booth. Like it's a, like, it's a, yeah, like a strategy. And, and I think we're going to replace that and think about how ridiculous it would sound if it's like, Hey Scott, do you do phone? Do you do yeah. phone? I do. Do you do email? I do. Yeah. E like if that sounds ridiculous, it's just a yeah. part of your communication strategy. And, and I think that video is going to be this, especially now through video messaging and synchronous video communication. No one's going to ask that question anymore. Everyone's going to be doing video because people go for the known versus the unknown. Mm -hmm. And if your competitors are sending out videos and they're building relationships and people are forming opinions about them and you're still sending out text-based communication or you're still sending out text-based communications misconstrued to your employees, then the people that are using video and getting face to face are going to be building those relationships. Fast. Oh my gosh. I mean, great way to start bringing the show towards a close. Like you just dropped another huge bomb. Everything we, most of the stuff we talk about right now was externally facing. Let's not forget the power of the internal facing communication, CEIOs staying in touch with their employees right now and what they're going through. I mean, a, a quick shout out to my brother-in-law. Uh, we were talking last night and 
and he has a construction company, commercial construction. Now, luckily they don't have a ton of employees because now they're like the puppeteers. They outsource to all the other contracting companies. They run it. Uh, but just a couple of years ago, they built their first in the Allentown style uh, skyscraper for Allentown. But it's like, you know, it's a 12 story glass, you know, beautiful building. So they've really grown a lot, pretty successful. But right now you want to exude confidence. You want to really pull your people together, bring your company together to survive this. He just told me last night that they did get approved for that, you know, the PPP support and they're immediately paying all of their people 40% more. That's he awesome. says, we want to spend this money because it does get converted to a grant. We also yeah. want to remind our people that we don't want to lose them. We do value them. So he's like, I'd rather invest in my people. He's like, so right now he's got, they have, they have their, some of their guys are literally just emptying their outbuildings and reorganizing things. It's totally below their pay grade and he's paying them 40% more to do it because he wants his people That's to fantastic. be busy and to stay productive because they can like that, that impressed me so much. That's so, fantastic. but people forget about that. Internal communication matters too. Absolutely. And especially if you're, if you're split apart when, when distance keeps you apart, when the coronavirus keeps you apart from the people that matter the most to your business. Yeah. You can't rely on text communication or no communication at all. Yeah, I love this. Well, listen, I do want to bring this show to a close. I do value your time. I'm having a blast, by the way. I hope you did too. Yeah, this, so, this was great. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. I, Any, anytime, and I'll, I'll go ahead and say it, anytime I can bromance on tech, marketing, and video on, while live podcasting at the same time, it's a good night. I mean, I'm all right with it. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, we didn't even talk about fitness. I know, right? So, but I mean, this, it, it, that I'll, that's, I mean, actually, gonna, I'm going to be sharing your tech to, I'm very, well, very connected to a lot of CrossFit gyms around here. I know them all. I used to be a CFL1 coach. All of my friends who own these facilities are entrepreneurs and are struggling right now. And this is just one more way they can revitalize their existing consumer base, but also attract, you know, that those new, as soon as they're allowed to reopen, right? okay, you got to recover. I mean, mm -hmm. if their business even survived, there's a few that I'm concerned about. I don't know. So it's, it's a shame. Uh, but I mean, these health and fitness businesses are essential as far as I'm concerned. They should never have been shut down. But that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> uh, but listen, I want to honor, I always ask my guest co-host to kind of honor the show and help them close it out. Uh, because obviously you're the guest co-host today, Stephen. So is there an all-encompassing message you guys are putting out there? Or are you, as, as the individual professional, it doesn't have to be bomb bomb, but like, how would you sum this whole thing up? And what, what are some final words you want to leave behind? It could be part of your legacy message since you have some powerful words behind you there on the wall, you know, be brave, be kind. What, what, how would you like to close the show out? I'm going to go with, um, this is a mantra that we've instilled in, in our marketing department. And, and honestly, it's, it bled into the rest of the company. Um, kind of ties into some of this stuff behind me here too. And it's simple. It's be a value and abundance will follow. Wow. That's short and sweet. I love that. Be a value and abundance will follow. But well, we're going to have to make sure that's quoted on the blog notes when they go up with the show notes. So, and actually uh, just to honor you guys one more time, because I love good books that give good content. So again, I'm going to screen share for the people watching live on Facebook and eventually on YouTube, rehumanize your business. Just go to bombbomb.com forward slash book and you can uh, learn more about that there and, and poke around their site and learn more about some technology. Uh, so again, uh, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air, Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had fun tonight. I definitely did. You guys know I always like to bring in the energy and I love fellow entrepreneurs and also just fellow positive professional influencers that care more about just the dollar. And I got some of that out of that today as well. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. Stephen definitely helped us do that today. So thanks for tuning in. And remember, you too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>